Hey YouTube, it's after pub time, so I've tried to oh, I have cracked this open. And what a surprise, look at the state of it. Like that is a serious, serious lump. What if I want to change that fuse? I mean Okay, so that is one big lump of epoxy. I just um, put a knife down all the sides of it and um and then I whacked it. Um and then I wiggled it out, but that is what's inside a Commodore C64 epoxy power supply. So now what I'm going to try and do is de-epoxy what I can. Okay, so this is the schematic just on a sheet of A4. It's a blatant ripoff of Crisis Workbench power supply, and it's just cheaped out to fit in the box of the C64 power supply. So credit to Crisis, um, and I've cheaped out in two ways: MP1584 for the buck converter instead of a Traco power regulator. Slightly less output filter in, or different numbers of caps. No zen on the output because I've got savers in my C64s internally. The guts of it are line neutral, 230 volts, the fuse 0.315 amps, X2 suppression cap just to take out transients and a MOV to take out any gross over voltage, 470 volts. So that's the primary. So the first secondary, just got the secondary coil there, a fuse 1.6 amps, exactly the same as crisis um, schematic and then a MOV 33 volts there to take out gross over voltage. And then we've got bridge rectifier here. So this is the bridge rectifier. So now it's DC. Still in the cap, 4,700 microfarads. Blatantly ripped his uh, um, value for the inductor there. I don't know if it's going to make any difference, but it seems to work. 8.2 microhenries. Then that was the other cap that I was experimenting with, putting different values on. To be honest, anything above 220 mics is going to be okay. What I would say, you're going to need 25 volt caps here and then we've got the mp1584 buck converter just on that five volts out zero volts the other secondary we just got a fuse same as that fuse a mov same as that mov straight out on the secondary so that's producing 10.8 volts unloaded we've cut the board to size with a dremel sanded it which with very light paper okay so i didn't give up with the press and peel um didn't want to go through, so I just stuck a bit of masking tape. It didn't like it, but it's done it. So I'm going to cut that out, iron that on, and then we'll get on with it. Okay, so there's the press and peel on the iron, uh, copper cloud even. Um, clean it up, and with some isoprop, and I've just tagged it where there's no traces. I'm not going to show you me iron it, because it's just a pain in the ass. but uh, wall setting, um, and just go over it, and I'll show you the results. Okay, so I've just touched it up. Ooh, Betty with a permanent marker. That's what it should look like. Okay, this is not what it should look like, but it'll do. And uh, it's only a first test anyway. It'll probably end up being permanent, but yeah, it should be like that. I think what I did wrong was I that basically the uh, iron was too hot and the press and peel melted into the iron. But uh, just using, bear in mind this is flipped. You gotta flip it before you print it. Uh, I've just used that to see roughly what we're doing. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is that we're not going to get any contact here, but if when it comes out, we'll just hack that away if we do. Okay, so there's a little midway update. You can see the colour of the liquids turn like blue-green, and the copper started to be eaten away. I'm just going to say when you do this, obviously glass and goggles, because this stuff is evil, and it will burn you and hurt you. Just um, also, don't tip it down the sink, because it will eat the metal in the sink. Oh, there we go, I'll try and drop, not to drop the phone in there. Okay, so I've taken the board out, rinsed it under water, loads of water. That's the result. Tell the difference between the stuff that did how it was supposed to, on that side, and my bodge job on the other side. But it should be good enough, I'll clean up these fuzzy edges. Okay, so there's the board cleaned up with a little acetone. And I'm just going to manually make sure that there's enough clearance here. It's not pretty, but... <coughs> it's fine uh, there, make sure there's enough clearance. So there's a the transformer block drilled out. That fits perfectly. Transformers on. Drilled all the little holes for the components. Okay, so there by the magic of YouTube it is. It's not 
pretty. It's not as good as the one it was copied off. It's only got one capacitor because that was all it would fit. Um, it's got its little regulator there. Um, so basically what we got is we got power in, uh, some protection against surging, a fuse, transformer, two rails out, both fused, both with over voltage protection. Um, really easy to show you the bottom. So I thickened up the traces with uh, solder and it's, it's really Heath Robinson. The reason for this is because I didn't realise that that was on the other side of the board so that was just stupid. I was going to put it on this side of the board so you could change the pot but then I thought nah, stupid. Just have it all on the same side because I've got, it's only a single sided board so I've got to be able to tag all my wires on and I've got no room to come back out again so that's what we've ended up with. So we've got ground 5 volts and, and AC voltage. So there it is in the case and that fits nicely. Um, I'm going to 3D print a little bracket, screw, screw. We have one screw in the side or maybe two screw in the side so this can't fall out because there's no other way of holding it in. And then the bottom will just clip on. So that's how it'll go. Pain in the arse, this only goes on one way, which happens to be crossways to the way I want it, but that's life in it. Um, little hook there I've made so it'll retain it in there and won't hopefully slip off. And then same there. It's got some sort of strain relief, so it won't hopefully float around. Even if it does, there's no way it can reach anything on the other side of the board. Yeah, so just that really. Just a bit, bit of a mistake there because <coughs> the board was transposed, so the negative and the positive were flipped. So I thought, oh, I could etch another board and print it all out again, but I just couldn't be bothered. Just cut the traces and switch the lines. <laughs> It'll be exactly the same thing. Broadly, how it's going to look is that. Obviously those will be plugged in. Uh, there's your AC, you know, those two. And there's your 5 volts and ground, I'm not sure which way around they are. I haven't got the balls to plug this in tonight, <laughs> indoors. Um, so I'm not going to test it just yet. And the other thing it's going to need, it's going to need obviously a retaining clip to hold this in so it can't fall out and electrocute someone. And also it's going to need some venting and there's no ventilation at all. So what I'm probably going to do, I'll think about it. I'll probably uh, drill some holes, I don't know. Okay, so there we are in the case, um, 3D printed brackets, so the board screwed into those. Um, and then to stop the board falling out, it's going to have one, possibly two, to stop it seesawing. It won't, it's in there pretty tight. So it's got cooling, I might put a couple down here just so it can suck some cold air in. And that will be our rebrick. Okay, so wired up badly. Uh, I'm going to plastic dip these. Let's reflow that uh, properly. Uh, it's actually not a bad join, but sort that out a bit. Volts AC plus ground. Plastic dip these. So there we go. I've just plastic dipped all the wires in. So when that goes off, it will hold them there. So if anything does come disconnected, it can't fly across. And also, I've plastic dipped the other end of that, which is just poking through a little bit so <clears throat> there's no way that that can conduct anything outside so I let that go off and then it's the moment of truth. Okay so it works, it's not a problem at all, I'm just soap testing it now uh, while the plastic dip dries. A side note, not great to use plastic dip, it's great for insulation but it's flammable so <laughs> I'll probably find something else but I'd rather not the bottom fall off and I'd rather have the wires covered. Uh, it's not even getting warm. Uh, obviously don't touch. Um, the reason it's beeping is because I've set the pot on the regulator to 5.14 and I've put a 1 amp load at 5 volts on the load and by the time it's getting down the cable it's just shy 4.93, 4.93 so uh, I just adjust that. Okay so I put a 3325 volt cap that I've nicked off of something else in my drawer 1.5 amps and we've got 10 20 millivolts up, 10 20 millivolts down. So stop it. Go to 2 amps. So I just take it down to 1 because that's probably what's going to be running on most of the time. 5 volts 
and there we go we've got like 10 uh, i've got the intensity right up there so that's 10 millivolts of uh of noise okay in case you're wondering if it's going to go anywhere in terms of uh, falling out the bottom there no it's not it's got a bolt through that side a bolt through that side and i had to put it on top of a stick and hit it once i've taken the bolts out to get the board out so there's absolutely no way that that's going to come out and hurt anyone and then on top of that this actually clips back in I didn't break the clips and even if it didn't clip back in it's got a screw here into the bracket so make sure that the bottom does not fall off okay so there's final test power supply working let's load a game up so here's a close up of the unit screw in each side some vent holes just put one little bolt in the bottom there my lovely feet. As you can hear, it is all going sweetly. There we are. See you all later. Thanks for watching.